we got the whole world here. So why do I say Deepak coming from Dubai, uh, Navneet from Mumbai, uh, Kairi from London, Krishna from Netherlands, and Pune, and I'm from US. <laughs> so we got the whole whole thing here. So um, and not just that, you know, we're gonna talk quite a bit here. So we got events, we got sports, and you no, know, uh, quite a lot other things as well. Uh, I don't know if I can cover all that in 20 minutes, but we'll try. So um, I would like to just give few seconds to each of you, okay, to just briefly introduce yourself, and then maybe I'll ask questions to each of, and uh, you know, uh, we'll connect more on that. So uh, starting with you, Atharva, please. Sure. Uh, hi everyone. I'm uh, Atharva Sabnas. I'm the co-founder of um, NFT Labs. We are a Singapore-based uh, company, and we are like the Asian equivalent of uh, Dapper Labs in the context that we work with uh, tier one sports organizations around the world, and we build custom Web3 solutions and products for them. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Test, test. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Krishna. I worked for Nike for five years uh, on the digital platforms. Uh, currently working also on other brands. Um, also creative director at Evolve, a digital fashion house. Um, I'm helping leaderships and brands to onboard uh, on this platform and helping to engage in a better way on different communities and roadmap. Hi everyone, my name is Kiri. I'm one of the co-founders of Tridium and head of business development. At Tridium, um, we build 3D and AR experiences for brands. Also, we do build 3D NFTs and um, buildings in the metaverse in two weeks. We'll be co-hosting the second Metaverse Fashion Week uh, alongside um, our partners with Akshkaya, Anna. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to be hosted on Decentraland, on OVR and Spatial. Uh, hi, my name is Navneet Mohan. Uh, I've been in events and live events and experiential marketeer for the last 22 years. Uh, I'm the founder of a company called Lux Live Experiences. Uh, I also have a content company called Scratch Content. And now I'm an independent consultant as well. Uh, so we we both from the events uh, business, uh, and we're trying to really work on some soft, soft spots where experiences can transform from uh, the live space to the virtual and virtual back to live. That's really where we are currently operating at. Hi, everybody. My name is Deepak Chaudhary. And, um, uh, I'm, I'm founder of Event FAQS, which is a media company in the event space. I also uh, founded Wow Awards, which is the largest gratification platform for event industry. Uh, I also run a festival and concert business in Middle East and India. The experience with Roshan Abbas called XPRNC in Dubai. And uh, I run a festival and a concert company called Eva Live, which is uh, a largest festival and concert company in India. So, yeah. Yeah, super Sorry, proud events, to be. Can we ask the console to give us a little more sound? Can't hear anything properly. Sorry, being an event manager, this happens. Okay. <laughs> so super proud to be a wide thing, the range of things that's uh, that we can look at here. So uh, you know, Atharva, you've been into sports. Now, Krishna, you worked with uh, you know brands like Nikes and Kyrie. You worked with uh, all fashion brands, LMVH, Gucci, and all of them. And you. Uh, Deepak and Navneet, you are the biggest in the event space. You know, uh, the top in the India and uh, in the Dubai as well. So, uh, Deepak, if I if may ask, so Web3, so what actually are your thought process on Web3? And what is the e event to do with Web3? What are the, what are the value that Web3 can bring to event? And what is the scale that you're looking at, the opportunity of it. What exactly are you thinking that with Web3 you can achieve with event? Okay, so I don't know how much uh, everybody knows about events. So from a, where all you can use, okay? So I'm going to be stay on the event space and I'm going to ask Navneet to take on the Web3 space. Um, so from a seminar to an exhibition, to a conference, to a roadshow, to a awards, to a concerts, 
to a wedding, to a birthday party, to a cricket match, to a fashion show, to a reality show. All these is events. Now, if you can take on the NFT and the crypto space in this, I think that's an opportunity. One, my focus, I, I spend my, my last 10, 15 years in uh, creating live space, which is concerts and festivals. Now, festivals can be called IPs, which is intellectual properties in the event space. From, let's say, um, I'll give you some examples of what's happening in India currently. Pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, the live business has changed. We were a, we were a small industry. We were a under 5,000 crore industry. Currently, we've done this year, we've 15,000 crore. So we've, we've raised threefold uh, as a live business industry. Okay, now, and this is an opportunity for Web3. Okay, how this scale can be used in that. So giving an example, uh, Arijit Singh show in a 2020 at Geo Garden in Mumbai did a sales of 3.61 crore of 9,000 people. Same 9,000 people in 2023 in January paid 7.91 crore. Now this is the growth of the business trajectory in life space. And same goes to festivals like Azoma Land, which is did pre-pandemic five cities, less than uh, 50,000 tickets, and they've done around uh, more than two lakh tickets now in five shows. Festivals like Lollapalooza have come in um, in India, which is a big story, and they've sold tickets worth 20 crores. It's never happened in our country in this part of the world. And same if I go to Middle East, Backstreet Boys were sold in single day, six hours it was sold. So this is what is happening in the live industry, what's the space. For our Web3 space, say for example, I'll give you Coachella as one of the examples. Coachella is one of the top five festivals in the world. They have, they have created uh, NFT. And uh, they've created for three layers. One, they created 10, 10 pieces for, um, for more specific to VIP experience, for more festivals, for, for lifetime, you can attend Coachella and so on. And then they've got 10,000 more at a $60, where they more focusing on some specific results. So this is one example of a large festival. Second, for example, a Budweiser at Lollapalooza launched an NFT. And now what, as a brand experience, they're doing and giving their, uh, let's say, um, they're giving their merchandise and so on. So this is an opportunity too. And third uh, is a content opportunity, which is the biggest opportunity. Now, how uh, you use events to create content and then content can be into crypto and so on. So this is the, just to put an opportunity in the single frame. Thank you, Deepak. No, Navneet, would you fill in more to that? Yeah, so uh, just taking on from where Deepak left, I think there's a direct correlation between live events and NFTs. And I'll, I'll explain this further. Uh, if you look at most NFTs, what is the, we keep talking about utility for an NFT, right, which has to transform into the real world as well as the virtual world. Now, the real world, if you look at examples already happening, right, it's events and experiences, right? Uh, uh, talk about the Bode parties that happened in New York, for example, right? It's an event. So my whole theory, and I mean, I might be wrong in the future, but I believe that every NFT creator slash brand that wants to launch has to have a very strong live communication, live events, vertical team agency working with them. So this is going to be a huge opportunity for the live industry and vice versa. I seriously believe that in the future, some of the biggest event properties of festivals will be the largest NFT guys. Let's take, for example, Tomorrowland. I hope you guys have heard of Tomorrowland, the biggest EDM festival in the world. I hope so. It's the biggest. The tickets get, a lack of tickets get sold in an hour. That's how it happens. Now, imagine having 1,000 NFTs being sold for lifetime benefits on an Tomorrowland. Do you think it's going to be a tradable NFT? Of course, it'll be a tradable NFT, right? It also depends on the promoters in the future to actually start focusing the live events promoters when they launch the NFTs, they have to focus their energies towards building the community better, right? They cannot just launch and leave it. There's going to be a lot of effort of giving special values, utilities for those NFT owners. But my synopsis, my thesis right now is some of these event platforms are going to be huge when it comes to NFTs. And even they will give a challenge to mainstream uh, brands launching NFTs as well. Because already the communities exist. They don't need any marketing costs to be spent. Because the same community, what we're talking about an NFT community, there's an event community already existing. So you're actually feeding the NFT into that community. And those are the first guys who are going to be early adopters to the NFT. And then eventually get traded. So I believe that it's going to be both ways. The live industry 
is going to, and that's something that we are working on right now, uh, the live industry is really going to take on the NFT revolution. And vice versa, every NFT creator slash brand needs to focus on the utility, which is primarily going to be a lot of live eventing and experiences. So this is my whole take on how this is going to evolve from here on. Yeah, thanks, Navneet. Thanks, Deepak. So, Atharva, now we talked about all about events. It looks like NFT, we're covering a lot about fan engagement. Sports is another area other than the events. So, what is your viewpoint uh, of NFT? What is the value that you think NFT is bringing to sports? And, you know, with your experience, what have you seen um, that has been happening now in India, and what do you foresee with that? With, uh, with, with sports, you know, when the market was new, um, the focus was all around collectibles. So all of the tier one brands, um, at least the biggest ones, NBA, MLB, all of them have um, done something in the collectibles uh, space. And there are still some brands like Australia Open who are doing really well with uh, collectibles. but. The general theme now is a shift away from using um, sports NFTs as collectibles to using sports NFTs as uh, tokenized fan club memberships. And there is a lot of trend to use these uh, fan club memberships as uh, in-stadium activations to engage people who go to live events and so forth. So a lot of NFTs are being given away at stadiums during games for free. And these NFTs eventually have the utility of uh, adding up to a fan club membership. But on the back end, what is happening is that these uh, sports teams are now relying a lot on wallet uh, analytics. So they will give you the NFT in the stadium for free. But then uh, when you are taking that NFT in a wallet, that wallet gets uh, tracked. And uh, that tracking is for eternity. They, they, they try to p profile you as a, as a fan. And they try to figure out what are the tra transactions you're doing, fungible and non-fungible to be able to then in the future market to you fan tokens. Maybe when we go back to a bull market, they will sell collectibles and uh, so forth. So that, that, that is the big shift. And there are some brands who now are looking towards collectibles, but in a slightly different uh, manner with certain innovations like, uh, you know, Bitcoin ordinals, which uh, recently has made a lot of, uh, lot of news. So for those of you who don't know how it, 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 Ethereum has uh, NFTs, Bitcoin for the longest time had only one form of NFT, which was called GOAT. Goat meant uh, gift of attendance token. So that is like the Bitcoin equivalent of a POAP. But now uh, Bitcoin also has uh, ordinals. It doesn't have it now, it had it since before, but recently ordinals picked up uh, some media attention and traction. So you will see a couple of uh, sports activations coming on those lines as well. Yeah, thanks Adhurva. So we uh, spoke about fan engagement and uh, both of you also touched about brands, right? So, uh, Krishna, you work with uh, some of the brands, Nike was one of them. So, if you can talk about what Nike got value out of NFT and what are your thoughts about how the brands can utilize this NFT uh, and what are you seeing as the future trend? Um, you know that Nike is a big brand, one of the biggest brands in the world and we already have a community. Now we're engaging with the community with co-creation of products. And the most important part is where Web3 is shifting towards is co-creation. Giving the community the right to help and co-create different type of shoes or shirts or that kind of th things, but also giving them access to different events. Um, if, you, if we go back to sports, they have a huge following. And if you tap in that community alone, you will probably have 75% people joining the NFT uh, of that certain brand or club. And on that moment, you, started, you already have a community and you can start building on top of this with special events, special engagements. Uh, if that person buys your club NFT, you can give them access to a token gated area where you can give them access to maybe hand signed shirts or products or meet and greet. But in the meantime, you don't forget about the community that doesn't have the NFT. You give them still access to certain tickets because it's important to have your community engaged. 
on the moment when they see that other people with the NFT is getting more perks, they will start thinking on, okay, I'll be buying that NFT in. And now you are earning royalties on top of that because now you are having supply and demand exchange. And that's where brands are, have to start to look at. Um, you see a lot of brands like Nike uh, joining Artifact, uh, taking over an art Artifact, Adidas working with World API Club. And that's what you kind of need to do to enter this space because these companies or communities already are well familiar with big brands, but also with the Web3 community that you can collaborate with. They already have a huge following and they will guide brands that are thinking of joining, but also help the brands on understanding the whole process of roadmap. It's not just dropping an NFT and go away. Most of the brands think like that. It's a very legacy way of thinking. It's important that you always keep engaging with your community and keep building with them and getting bigger. And with that, you will always have no problem. Brand loyalty is one of the most important things uh, in this space. Yeah, thanks, uh, Krishna. So we've been talking about brands quite a lot and uh, events and space as well. Uh, Kairi, you said you are working on the metaverse as well, and you work with a lot of top brands, LMVH Group, Gucci, and all of that. So you are also, you bring a different perspective from the creative side, right? So you make the creative digital twins, more realistic things. How is that adding value to NFT? And from your viewpoint, when you are working with the fashion and all of that, if you can put in your viewpoint and shed some light on that. Yeah, I mean, we need to bear in mind that there are different tier, tiers of um, the utilities that each NFT project has to offer. For example, one of the utilities can be an access to one of the events that you guys do, also to sports events that you can meet and greet the different players, uh, but also brands can provide the uh, free you know, the goodies or a free t-shirt or whatever. The most, one of the most important things that we need to be aware of is that communities have different values as what is the ideal reward, whether that's something that it's free or a proof of attendance or, or the authentication. One of the main reasons that brands trust, uh, people trust brands uh, NFTs is maybe uh, because the NFT project has an ethically sourced um, objective, for example, ethically sourced materials and people trust um, the brand, or at the same time, the, the brand has to offer um, a roadmap that people need to hold the NFTs to get back all the utilities. So it's a roadmap that all creators need to be aware of that the, um, they need to trust the process, they need to trust the creator and the brand that they're not going to be scammed at the end of the day. So another thing might be the, the authentication that each product that uh, the brand is selling, it's, um, um, it's legit, it's not a fake one. As you know, most in most uh, in the fashion industry, the number one thing of fakes is bugs. So once you have the NFT authenticator, you know that the product is uh, original. So it depends on the project, and again, the community has different values, and the way you market to the community, each member of the community has different values. So you need to. Be aware of uh, that marketing, marketing in the NFT space has changed. You need to see what are the meaningful parts of your NFT drop to your community, whether that's what we talked about earlier. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Yeah. Um, just on that, I think uh, if you look at community, it's already your whole marketing. Re Always got these tickets, which uh, you know you usually got scammed outside a concert. I mean. That's already, there's a, there's a backlog in everybody's head about that, and now NFTs, is, we are talking about a lot of scams. So that perception needs to be broken as well. I think these are some of the major, other than all the regular challenges that we want to do.
And one is, um, I'm saying an opportunity instead of saying a difficulty is a collaboration. So experts of events and an expert of NFT should combine and work collaboration. I think that's, that's where it'll come to. Thanks. I think we're running out of time. Quick thing from other, is there anything that you can add as uh, from the challenges point? No, I think uh, the challenge is just fear. So there is a saying that nobody gets fired for buying Cisco, right? People, people don't want to um, be the one responsible for a potentially disastrous failure for their organization. And that fear of uh, failure is holding a lot of things back. Thank you. Thank you. It's also important, the mind shift of yes, companies. Exactly. They're exactly. still thinking in a very old way of yeah. legacy. We drop something, we give people some colored clothes, and that's it. Yeah. But now it's a whole different way of thinking, and that's something that they have to start learning Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. No, great panel. I think we got so much viewpoint. Uh, as Akshia, I'm also proud to say that we are pretty much partnering with all of them here. <laughs>